The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations, nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel passage for this Sunday comes from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on keeping our, uh, uh, ourselves focused on the Lord, even if we don't always see Him. So we're talking here about a different type of sight, connectedness with the Lord, in what we call faith, even if the Lord is not always visible to our eyes. This is the message that we gathered in the first reading where the Jews lived by faith. They were connected with God who promised them liberation, even if they have not yet seen the fulfillment of that promise. They were attentive to God and they hoped that God will fulfill His Word. And that's the same message in the second reading. In the letter to the Hebrews, we find Abraham, Sarah, remaining focused on God, even if, rationally speaking, they could not see the point of God's Word. But the one who made the promise is worthy of trust. So their hearts were focused on God. And, wow, even if they did not see with their eyes the full fulfillment of the promises, they lived by faith. They never wavered. They were focused on God. In the gospel, we find Jesus talking about the attitudes of some servants. The moment their masters leave and the masters are out of sight. I'm sure many of us could relate with this story. The moment our boss, our master, becomes invisible, 
physically absent, what happens to the servant? In the parable of Jesus, he says, Some servants, the moment the master leaves to attend a wedding, and so will be away for a few days or even weeks, without telling the servant when he would be back, what is the possible effect on the servant? What will happen to the servant when the master is not seen anymore? And when the master does not see physically what the servant is doing? Now, Jesus says, some start acting like woe, like Little bosses. The master is gone. Now I assume the role of being master. And this false master becomes abusive towards his co workers. And this courage to be abusive is born out of. The false idea that anyway, the master is absent. We don't see him and he does not see us. Okay? And so, this master, this false master takes his time, taking advantage, eating, drinking, abusing the other uh, uh, fellow workers, I remember these are his fellow workers, but he is now in a pretentious mode. I pretend to be the master and does not even consider that the master will return at a time that we do not expect. This is a foolish servant. He lost his connection. With his master. The moment the master is physically absent, this servant is no longer focused on the master. His heart does not remain in the master. His heart forgets that there is a real master. He forgets that the master has orders has plans that he must implement. When the master is out of sight, the master is also absent in the heart of the servant. Then the master returns. Imagine what will happen to that servant. Oh, we can imagine the servant rushing to do the work that has not been accomplished, rushing to hush up his fellow servants so that they would not report to the master. So the gospel is telling us, be vigilant. But how do we remain vigilant? The gospel is telling us, be prepared for the coming of the master, for we do not know the hour. But how do we remain prepared? Do not lose your connection with the master, even if the master seems to be absent. Do not cut your connection with the master, even if we do not see him. This is what we call faith. The faith that the second reading talks about. The faith that Abraham and Sarah exemplified. It was not always clear to their minds and to their eyes what the Lord was talking about. But their hearts were always focused on God. And so whenever the Lord comes and whenever the Lord fulfills His promise, they are ready. What the Lord commands, they will do because they have not lost their connection with Him. The same attitude of the Jews in the first reading. They were prepared. They slaughtered the lamb. They were waiting in the dark 
But in their hearts, they were connected with the God who promised to save them. And they were attentive. They were ready so that when the angel passes, they will go. My dear brothers and sisters, what type of servants are we? Are we the servants who cuts our connection with the Lord and falls into the danger of, oh, anyway, the Lord does not see me. So, we engage in things that are against His will and we also become abusive, irresponsible, lazy because the Master is not anymore in our hearts. This is the attitude that is equivalent to lack of faith. I know, my, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are instances in life when we do not see the Lord. Uh, in moments of anxieties, problems, it's so hard to see the Lord. But some people, at the height of success, at the height of joy, they also do not see the Lord. And so the connection in faith is cut. So, in times of problems and anxieties, some people just lose their faith. And some, at the height of success, become like this abusive servant. No more connection with the master. And what a disaster. Whether we are at the height of joy and success or at the depths of suffering, let us not lose our connection with the Lord. Let us keep connected to Him in our hearts, even if we do not see His presence. He might come anytime. And who will see His coming? And who will be prepared to welcome Him? Only those who remained connected with Him in their hearts. Faith. My dear brothers and sisters, I was able to visit uh, a country, I won't mention which one, and I had the opportunity to interact with some of our overseas Filipino workers. And I met a person there who, as it were, rose from the ranks. His uh, employer found in him a trustworthy employee. And so, to his surprise, this rich employer entrusted to him a whole villa hmm. and told him, I am out of the country most of the time. This most precious possession of mine, a villa. No? You take care of this one. You will reside here. Now, look at this. Some of his friends tell him, hey, you practically own the villa. Why don't you use it? Hmm? Entertain friends. Gather your fellow Filipinos. Uh, throw parties there. Take advantage of your position. And this lowly man told me, Bishop, I'm tempted all the time to follow their suggestion. But one thing holds me back. My master, my employee, puts his trust in me. And that trust will always be in my heart. That binds me to him. I will never violate that trust. So even in his physical absence, my heart is always open to him. I will not do anything to ruin that trust. Good and faithful servant. That's what we should be to the Lord. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.